Okay, so in terms of the five to six meals per day, I had an interesting conversation with uh, Dax Moy over here in the UK, and he was saying that he, um, with certain people, again, promotes regular eating, but it's not for the physiological reasons. Like some people say you need to be having protein every two or three hours. He said it's more from a, a psychological perspective because people, they haven't got the problem of, oh my God, I'm not eating for five to six hours, and that's generally when they're going to start snacking. Would you agree with that, or do you agree with the, the regular protein intake? Absolutely. I'm with, I'm with Dax. I mean, I think the body is um, much more resilient than people give it credit for. And when I say that, I mean, I think it's a lot harder for people to lose muscle mass than they think. And, you know, if you don't have protein every two hours, you know, there's nothing to be worried about. And that's why the fasting is okay. So I really think, like, even if someone ate three, you know, the classic three square meal, meals per day, as long as the food is of the right quality and the calories are of the right amount, you're going to lose body fat. I mean, you can lose body fat and get very lean on three meals per day. If that suits your personality, we can do it. And we can do it where, you know, it's very low in protein at one of those meals. It's not that big of a deal. I mean, it's it just, when I say the body is resilient, I mean, like, we've evolved over thousands of, of years, I mean, millions of years, I mean, depending on your view of how we evolved here, how we became created, we're not going to shrivel up all our muscle and, you know, if we don't eat 180 grams of protein every day and, you know, split up into 30 gram portions six times per day. It's just, you know, human physiology is more powerful than that type of stuff. So that's my thoughts on it, and I certainly think that we're going to see a lot more common sense. Um, how little can you pay attention to this type of stuff uh, type training recommendations and, and nutrition recommendations in the future and by that I mean we're going to, you know, Brad Pilon is a great example of him just saying you know what, let's all take a, a chill pill here for a second and you know, just maybe go back and, and relax and see if we can't just eat normal and make sure that we're eating a variety of foods and, and it's a very healthy mindset and that's what I I want people to, to look into as well. And then also with the um, exercise, and I apologize if I'm rambling here, but, you know, with the common sense exercise stuff, I think we're going to see people saying, you know what, if I just stay active and I go and do fun activities four or five days per week, I really only need to go to the gym 20 minutes twice a week to do X amount of strength training, which is really the only thing you need to do in terms of a structured workout program. You can get everything else from your lifestyle. You know, you can go and do rock climbing one day, and you can go and do, you can jog outside one day if you want, you can play sports, you can hike. I mean, you don't have to go to a gym and use any cardio machine. The only thing you need to do is structured resistance training and just a small amount of it for the health benefits and bone benefits. And, I mean, people can do that outside, but it's a little bit harder to find some, you know, some implements to lift and, and uh, the right amount. So most people need to go to the gym and do... 10 to 15 to 20 minutes of strength training twice a week, and then they can stay active. And so that's, you know, going back to the original question you asked me about with Dax and his nutrition stuff. Again, we're just trying to simplify it for people and, um, you know, not force them to go to the gym six days per week for 90 minutes and then eat every two hours on an alarm clock, that type of thing. I mean, that's, that's the 80s and 90s mentality, and we got to get away from that because it's just clearly not acceptable to enough people, and we just need to show them other ways to eat beyond the, the processed food stuff and, you know, make them enjoy real food and, and enjoy activity again. Yeah, I think that's sometimes where we're going wrong. It seems that the people in the fitness industry who are supposed to be making life easier for people, I think sometimes think we're making it harder for them. You know, we're making things so complicated that we end up turning them off from exercise. Is that basically what you're saying? You know, it's a case of find what you enjoy. Absolutely, but, yeah. 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 <laughs> you said it a lot better in a lot fewer words than I did. And I think it's because <laughs> You know, this is our thing that we really like to do, and, and so we're putting together these programs for people who, who, you know, this isn't their thing, and they don't love to do it as much as we do. Some clients end up loving to do it as much as we do, but most don't, and so we put together these programs which are really not in going to be practical for people, so let's try and make things a little more practical, and if people want to do more, then we can you know, put them on those types of programs, but, you know, twice a week we should be able to give people a great program and show them how to live and be active, and, and that's really the key, is, is is finding ways for people to be active. I mean, there's so many leisure activities that don't require activity these days, and it is hard, so sometimes a structured workout is the only thing that gets them, but, you know, for people that are interested in doing leisure activities, let's, you know, let's try and give them some options here, and, 
yeah. not you know, force our values on them, which, again, like you said, if we're making it too complex, we're doing the exact opposite of the thing we're supposed to be doing in the first place, which is helping them. Excellent. Okay, if we just go, um, I just wanted to go back to the subject of protein, um, back to kind of eat, stop, eat, and Brad recommending that we don't need anything more than between sort of 70 and 120 grams of protein per day. I know you do a lot of kind of personal experiments and experiments with other people. Have you found that to be true? Do you think 120 is enough? And I mean, really, with 120, we're talking sort of the bigger, the bigger guys in the gym. What are your experiences in terms of protein intake? I, 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 would, I would say that, you know, Certainly for the majority of people that I work with, which are regular people, 70 to 120 is, is going to be enough because if, if you take a look at, you know, the, the best science says 1.2 to 1.6 grams per kilogram. And, you know, we're certainly not, you know, when it, you have to take into account body fat as well. That 1.2 to 1.6 gram per kilogram information came from people with, you know, less than 15% body fat. So we have to, first of all, be careful about giving the one gram per pound uh, recommendation to someone who's, you know, to a, a five foot two woman who's 230 pounds. I mean, why does she need 230 yeah. protein? So we, we need to, first of all, think of that because most people um, have been giving this one gram thing for so long and, you know, but it, we haven't taken into account with how, you know, that came from bodybuilding, which is fine, where people are really lean, but now we've got people that are really obese, and we can't give them that type of information. So going back to the 120 grams for a big muscular guy in the gym, I would go and look at the 1.2 to 1.6 and grams per kilogram. So if a guy's 100, 100 kilograms, then maybe he will need more than that 120 grams. I mean, he might need closer to 200, but, but uh, you know, because he's a 100, 100 kilogram guy, at 1.6, you know, maybe one, you know, 180. That's that's more than enough. I really don't think too many guys are going to need much more than that. Steroid use um, accepted here, of course, so yeah. you know, or excluded. So I think Brad's pretty much on the right level with that type of stuff. And, and again, for my people, and when I say my people, I mean the people that use turbulence training. They're they're average, normal, everyday people, and, and so they can get that much from food. And I think again, it's just a a nice, you know, relax. You don't have to be going and slamming protein shakes every two hours. Type of thing. Okay, right. We're just about to move on to protein shakes, actually. I know you're a bit of a, a chocolate milk nut for post-workout recovery. Can you explain why you choose that over, you know, your bog-standard protein supplement? What's so special about this chocolate milk? Well, there certainly isn't anything, and that's, but that's the same that can be said about the protein shake. There's nothing special about the protein shake. And so if you take a look, and, and the one thing is, People from the States, I've uh, traveled extensively through the United States and, and uh, sampled my fair share of chocolate milks throughout the States, and there is a difference in the product that people call chocolate milk in the United States versus what they call it here in Canada. And here in Canada, you get um, chocolate milk with, you know, it uses sugar as opposed to high fructose corn syrup, and it's real, it's, it's chocolate milk. In the States, you tend to get what's called like chocolate drink in most places, at least what I've found. So the ingredients are not... It's a McDonald's milkshake. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. But even these, I, I don't know, other weird concoctions they have in these plastic bottles. Um, you know, unless I'm missing what, uh, you know, maybe there is elsewhere. But in Canada, you get 18 grams of protein in this, you know, 500 milliliter uh, carton of chocolate milk that you can pick up at any convenience store. And it contains sugar and protein. And if you take a look at any... Um, post-workout drink that is on the market, you know, in terms of bodybuilding, it's sugar and protein. And they, in, in fact, uh, this guy, Alan Aragon, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, he's a writer for Men's Health and nutrition expert for them, and he did a really interesting uh, comparison between one of the really popular protein or, uh, post-workout drinks on the market and chocolate milk, and you, and you can look it up on the internet. And he basically found that, you know, the stuff is the exact same, it's just cheaper to drink chocolate milk. And, you know, they're, like I said, neither of them 